Hello everyone, my name is Clancy's and welcome to the clan. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Mm. <laughs> Let me just get through this intro people because I've been laughing the whole day and my lungs hurt. Hey <laughs> Sapele Poison Cool. I'm Zulu. And as a Zulu person, I can never claim to know no Zulu because I'm also a coconut. But then comes Omun. <laughs> I'm so sorry for wasting your time by come on people today was hilarious in court. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you okay, listen to me now during the outro. <laughs> so, guys, let's just continue with this video. So, please do me a favor by smashing the like button so we can trigger the YouTube algorithm. We've been doing really, really bad this week, I must say, when it comes to the like button. We are not pressing it as a result of that. The YouTube is like, uh, sir, the algorithm is not getting triggered. So, please smash me the like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing, my goodness, I have tears. I don't know if you can see my eyes are red because I've been laughing the whole day. A poison. Okay, let me not get myself laughing. Let me get to, let's get to this video, guys. I got so much to do. I have to go cut my hair. I have to do a lot. A lot that I have to do in preparation for tomorrow. But anyways, guys, Colonel Rapadu continued with his testimony and concluded it, by the way. Today, when Mshololo took to the floor and boy, did she cook him for breakfast or what? Because basically she did what I've been wanting to hear for a while. Even though Advocate Mgome Zulu did try but realized, you know what? Let me not embarrass him. But Advocate Mgome, uh, what's her name? Mshololo was like, mm -mm, I want to hear you make that translation. How did you tell accused number two exactly in Isi Zulu who you were to hear? You mean, and I'm like, the translation is wrong. It talked about South and North. I'm talking, yeah, North Pole and South Pole, like, worlds apart. And then it goes and uses the word, e poisa el cool. Now imagine, guys, you just been tortured, tubed, and done all these things by all these officers. And then eventually you meet the big man. Because that's what e poisa el cool means. The, you know, the higher ranking police. Now you'll get to meet the person whom probably is the one that gave orders for you to be beaten, to be almost killed by a bunch of hooligans in uniforms. How do I know that I now I am meeting the devil himself? And at that time, do you think I'm just going to be happy and willing to write a confession of a crime I did not commit? No, this is inducement at the highest level. And I was like, and then he, this particular uh, rapper person is like, no, that is not tantamount to inducement. Uh, that is your own understanding. I'm like, no, sir. After what has happened to me, I would say, okay, now the devil himself. Now, what are you going to do to me? So, of course, maybe by that time I meet you, I'm already cooked. I'm ripe. I am, yeah, I'm serenaded. And now I'm ready to do what you want me to do. Whether it's true or false, the fact of the matter is you introduced yourself as Ipoisa El Kool. And then, of course, that time, oh my goodness. You know, there's one thing learning how to speak Zulu. You know, Zulu is easy to learn. Learning how to speak Zulu is one thing, but knowing how to speak Zulu is a totally different thing. And understanding Zulu as well goes along with you uh, having learned is Zulu. Speaking it though, is Zulu I'm telling you. <laughs> Especially when you are not a Zulu speaker because if I always say that the Zulu speakers in Johannesburg or in Gauteng, they speak Fanagalo Zulu. It's like people that speak this language, they're not necessarily themselves Zulu speaking people, but come from other tribes and other cultures. And of course, because Zulu is a widely spoken language in South Africa, therefore, they will learn those few words here and there and also understand it. But speaking it, totally different story. And that is why this is what we saw on the stand today. In fact, what we heard on the stand today, when he tried to translate 
is English into Zulu when he. <laughs> I was like, hold up, hold up, cut, cut. Did you see the live chat? Like it was alive with people just burst out laughing. But anyways, let's not uh, let's not waste more time because just I, I I need to recover from this laughter. I really do. <laughs> oh I, I, I know people no 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 please stop me. So at the end of the day, what exactly did accused number two understand from Colonel Rapadu? I would say he understood absolutely nothing. It has been established by him, Colonel Rapadu, that accused number two, number two's level of education is elementary school. I mean, I think that's primary school or something like that. Is it primary school, right? It's elementary school, uh, school level. So meaning that he does not have any good verse in English or can understand many words in English, let alone an entire conversation in English. Meaning that an interpreter is definitely needed. But no, this colonel played both the, uh, what do you call this, the justice of the peace as well as a police officer as well as a, an interpreter. Now, the interpretation part of everything that transpired between the two of them was lost in translation because even understand everybody that speaks Zulu, Zulu speaking, we were like, why are you butchering our language? Anyways, let's go on, people. <laughs> I know I'm a coconut. I speak Zulu at home. Like, fluent Zulu. Like, my mom comes from the northern part of KwaZulu Natal, Mpangin. And if you know anything about people that come from northern KZN, like Ndanzi and all five of the accused, they come from northern KZN. That is why they speak Zulu, Zulu, Zulu. Kwanongoma, it is where the Zulu kingdom is at. I'm talking the Zulu king or the Zulu royal household is there. Kwanongoma. <laughs> you can imagine people that come from there when they speak Zulu. It's not as, uh, uh, what do you call this, a Gauteng Zulu Fanagalo. It ain't. It's Zulu. It's like, mm. and sometimes when my mom used to speak, I'll be like, can you notch it down to Durban Zulu? Yes, there's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference, I'm telling you. <laughs> because you have different types of Unama Bata, Unama Binga, Yune Kaza, all those people, they speak Zulu differently. So, so if I was Danzi, I would have been totally confused. I would not know what is this man talking about. And secondly, all I want is to save my life because I am before the man. The man, you know, poison cool. So, of course, whatever that I've been prepared for, it is now happening that I need to drop a confession. Otherwise, the Lee Poison Kulu is going to get me his dogs one more time to even kill me. That is what I think was uh, on Dance's mind. So now you ask yourself, was this done freely and voluntarily? I do not think so. So Colonel Rapadu was adamant. He stood his ground and said, listen, I interpreted everything to the suspect at the time and he understood everything. And then in my mind, I'm like, so you are going to take what is written in English or what you wrote in English or what you were listening to the suspect telling you in Isu Zulu, you writing it in English, at the end of the day, you take what you've written in English and hand it over to him and say, read it and then uh, confirm if everything that uh, is said on the statement is correct. How is, uh, what, where's the logic in that? The man just said, I do not understand English. I have very little knowledge about speaking English. But no, you take an entire English written statement, you give it to him and say, read and then confirm if this is true. So this statement was made freely and not coerced? Come on, I don't think so. And this is what he said, the suspect could not read English. And so he forgave him by basically handing the paper over to him to translate for himself that everything that's written is correct. What does section 35 of the constitution say? When a person that is detained as well as arrested 
I don't understand where the differences came when Advocate Baloy stood up and said that is according to a arrested person. And I'm like, but if I'm arrested, I'm detained. English. English and Zulu are in the same WhatsApp group. I'm telling you, just because you can read and write it does not mean you understand it. One thing I know about English, English is that it's easy to speak it, it's also easy to read it, but it's difficult to understand. You know, that is why there's an English say that says, listening is a skill. And then with Zulu, it's easy to learn Zulu, it's also easy to understand it, but talking it, it's totally a different story altogether. <laughs> yes, people of Gauteng, <laughs> I'm talking to you. Today I'm messy <laughs> So that is why I believe that there should have been an interpreter who would have taken down the Zulu part of the confession and then at the end translated back to Ndanzi and ask hey everything that is written on here is correct and true and then he will say yes or no or whatever the case might be but no this man played a player and a, re a referee as well as an ex a spectator in the same room. Rapadu understand he was speaking about everything that ought to have happened. All the procedures, the processes, that is what is provided by the constitution as well as legal requirements that they're supposed to do. But no, I do not believe that they followed the processes to the letter. That is why he is being entangled with his own lies when Advocate Mshololo was challenging him. I did not see a man who had confidence in his voice to a point where it was almost non-existent. Why? Because his confidence was shot by Advocate Mshololo. You could tell that he does not want to be on the stand anymore. He just wants this process over and done with. But at the same time, he still needs to stick to the script and lie. And he was uh, lying through his teeth. Oh, this time around, he, he kind of like forgave us with this performer. Not perform he did not I don't think he even mentioned it once the performer. But of course Advocate Mshololo did what I thought they ought to do as a defense team. Stick to the constitution. The constitution is the only way that is going to show these people what liars they are. And of course the constitution exposed Rapad, also exposed the other two officers that took the stand later on that you did not follow due diligence. You did not follow what the constitution says, especially section 35 of the constitution. With Rapadu, he could not navigate himself out of this one because the constitution is very strict when it comes to constitutional rights of the people of South Africa and anybody else that is under the sun of South Africa. It was beautiful to watch Advocate Mshololo really having this witness for breakfast. I was like, thank you, ma'am. This is what we are, you are known for. You are Mshololo. Shoshalo. <laughs> So at the end of the day, how fair was Ndanzi treated by Rapadu, especially when it comes to his constitutional rights? And I am saying it one, once again, the judge has no any other choice but to throw out both these statements that were made by Cronier as well as by Rapadu. But the point that I'm trying to make is Rapadu did not comply with the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, section 35. I think most of the provisions that, that are enshrined in section 35 of the constitution were violated by Rapadu. And I think he knows this. And then I'm looking at the judge who looked a little bit, I, I, I don't want to lie. I was a little bit confused with his body language. One moment he was angry, the other, the next he was laughing. And the next he was a little bit hilarious towards the end. He was quite funny and I was like laughing. He was adding to the hilarity of the day and I was like, whoo, what a Friday. Thank you so much that this Friday ended with a bang in the North County High Court in the sense of maybe a murder trial. Yes, unfortunately, we need to find out at the end of the day who killed Senzo Meiwa on the 26th of October 20, uh, 2014. But uh, by the look of things, we don't look in near, near close to uh, getting to the truth. So basically, Advocate Mshololo exposed how the police, uh, the South African police services actually work in this country. No due diligence. 
They do not respect the constitutional rights of South Africans. The same people that they swore to serve and to protect. How is that even possible? And then came to the matter of the 48 hours. Again, as a police officer, as well as the, what do you call this? <clears throat> Again, as a police officer, especially as the commissioner officer or commission officer, you ought to know that when a person is brought before you for confessions, the first thing that you should ask is, are you charged? And the answer should be yes. And secondly, have you met the magistrate? And of course, the answer should be yes. Uh, within how much space of time, they were supposed to tell you before the 48 hours expired, then the person is legitimate, legitimately before you. And now you can proceed. But no, conveniently, this justice of the peace does not care about the constitutional rights of the suspect before him. He proceeds anyway. You know why he proceeds? Because he knows everything that is telling the court in court today was absolute lies. Absolute lies. Because there's no way that he's arrested on the 16th and on the 19th, and, and on the 19th, it comes to you at 2 a.m. and you don't ask these important questions. Because if he had told you that I was arrested on the 16th and today is the 19th, I have not seen a magistrate yet. You're supposed to say, you know what, I cannot proceed from this point on because the constitutional rights of this individual before me have expired. I do not want to find myself testifying in court like he already is and his tongue is tangled because he can't navigate himself out of the 48 hours. He even says that I don't know if he was indeed taken uh, to court within 48 hours or beyond the 48 hours, which is a bunch of lies from an old man. Here's the other thing that I learned not so long ago. Apparently, there was a person that was arrested. I'm not quite sure if it was in KZN, but he appeared at the Peter Marisberg Magistrate Court for the murder of Senzo Mewa. And then he was taken to court within the 48 hours after being charged with the murder of Senzo Mewa. And apparently when the matter came to the magistrate, the magistrate kicked it out and said, this is a bunch of lies. And I think the defense should call that magistrate to testify on their behalf or in their favor. Because I want to hear that story that now you're going around picking every Tom, Dick and Harry and then you are placing the death of Senzo Mewa to take responsibility for. And yet they were far away from the Fosloras for that matter in 2014. And now they have to go to jail and serve a life sentence for a crime they did not commit. I, I say the defense must get that magistrate on their side so that he can testify and tell the court that indeed on this particular day, somebody by the name of 123 had, was brought before me and then he was charged with the death of Senzo Mewa or for killing Senzo Mewa. And therefore, when I looked at the docket or I looked at the, the, what do you call this, or I did my own investigations, I found out this is a bunch of lies and I, I, de, um, I struck it off the road. So I think the subs actually learned a lesson from that and they made sure that this time around the person, the people they are going to get, they do the so-called due diligence, even though everything would have been already prepared before they can actually secure a conviction out of the people that they are going to handpick on the streets of, uh, Tembisa, Kwanongoma, uh, what do you call this, uh, GP's town as well as Fos Loras. So you see, it could have been any of us. Any of us could have been uh, one of the five people on the dock today. So it's possible that they did not charge Ndanzi within 48 hours because they realized that if they took Ndanzi to a magistrate, same thing was going to happen. So before they could actually take him to a magistrate, first they need to abstract a false confession out of him. That way it's so-called solid. The other thing that actually made me realize as I was listening to Apadu was testifying was that, oh my goodness, the two officers that came after him when they were testifying, they said that he was driven to a uh, Boxberg Magistrate's Court. I don't think the two officers that took the stand are anything to write home about, except to say that they were put, it was put to them that they were the people that were torturing accused number two. Of course, they denied it. And Advocate Ngomezulu reminded all of the three of them, this is uh, Rapadu and the two officers, that just because a case was not opened against them, 
that a case can always be opened by accused number two. And then he asked, are you going to deny that you tortured and tubed the, the suspect? And of course they said, yes, they will deny it. It's on record. So I kind of like, like that because I don't think they did think about that, that uh, accused number two, if he gets acquitted, he actually can walk into a police station and open a, a case of assault and all of that, even attempted murder. But eh, it's all and bold. And the other thing that I asked myself, okay, come on, judge. Geninda, I think at this point, is one powerful cop. And think about Albertine Police Station with accused number one. Why they did not want to sign him out? So do you think that if accused number one or accused number two wants to open a case against the police officers that uh, were assaulting and tubing them, they would actually uh, uh, write a docket? I don't think so. Not under Gininda's watch. Any police station by the look of things in South Africa, I think is in charge of them. So of course, there will be no way that IPED would actually have a case of assault, attempted murder, and all of that before it. Because all the police officers in those police stations would have feared for their lives. And the last thing that I also took from the, the last two witnesses is that they wrote nothing. Their pocketbooks destroyed apparently the SWAT unit of EMPD was disbanded and as a result the pocketbooks were also gone with the disband like how do you keep information especially on cold cases because I would have thought okay before you destroy this unit let's take all the cold cases and keep them aside because you know what it's all and maybe at some point the case will wake up and become hot again and then they get the perpetrator but no, they threw away the pocketbooks. I was like, this pocketbook thing, every police officer that takes the stand, seemingly the pocketbooks are also missing. Which goes to show that this entire case is a fabrication. So before 3 o'clock this afternoon, Advocate Gomez Zulu, who was on the floor cross-examining, I think, Joseph, he said, or he reported to the court that he has something on his chest. And it's even said it's moving in his chest and that he's asking for an adjournment. Of course, the judge was a little bit reluctant, but he wanted to also know for how long he wants the adjournment. And then he said for the day. And uh, of course, the court did adjourn until Monday so that Advocate Mgome Zulu can go check out his chest. I hope uh, he gets well and he recovers so that on Monday he cook this particular witness that is on the stand because I am thinking he's cracking as well. Of course, Advocate Baloy did not object to the adjournment and I don't think Advocate Baloy will ever object to any early adjournment because it actually gives him the time that Advocate Nisi told him that it's no shame, sir to ask for a very long adjournment so you can prepare your case properly. So every little adjournment that the defense requests, he will not object to that because he does need the time. He's not prepared. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure what is he preparing because this case is dead. So if you like the video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, give it a like. Anyways, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking the channel and also supporting it financially. I highly appreciate you guys so very much. So please do leave me a comment down below and let me know what was your highlight about today's hilarity. Were you entertained? Were you upset? What was happening to you at the time when you were hearing how the Zulu language was being butchered by a part. <laughs> Anyways, guys, also share this video far and wide. Don't forget to like other YouTubers' videos and also subscribe whenever you come across them. And also, I'll see you next time with a new video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.